You know, there's something I've noticed, a bit of a trend online, and even just a general attitude that is, it seems commonplace among people of maybe all generations, and maybe this mindset has existed for a long, long time. I would say evidently it has. And the mindset is this, that, you know, if somebody is wrong and they are wrong in the way that they live their life or the, the things they do or they, they're wrong in their ideology, the things they just believe in, the things they say, you know, they're just wrong or they're evil or they're sick or they're fucked up or, you know, intolerable because of the beliefs that they have even if they don't necessarily, you know, push their beliefs outwardly and really it doesn't affect anyone in a significant way, the fact that people have unacceptable views and beliefs, that, you know, falls in this category as well. And the way that people respond to those people, you know, whether we're talking about all kinds of people with all kinds of perspectives and attitudes and dispositions, uh, that are born out of ignorance, you know, uh, uh, lack of education, maybe misinformation, you know, being raised to see things a particular way, or being taught to feel about things a particular way based on their experiences. And the general reaction to these people, wh you know, whether they're sexist, whether they're racist, whether they're speciest, whether they're ableist, you know, whatever they are, whether they're a criminal, whether they've committed an atrocity, such as rape or murder or pedophilia, anything like this, you know, people, men that beat up women, you know, any kind of person that has done something wrong or says something wrong or believes in something in just a really fucked up way, according to other people, this is the point, this is how people generally react to them. That, you know, if, if a guy, let's say, yeah, rapes a girl, or beats on a girl, or molests a child, that, you know, they should lock him up and throw away the key. That's, that's the light uh, response. The heavier responses go along the lines of, they should cut his dick off and feed it to him. You know, or somebody should tie him up and beat him to a pulp. And, you know, they should just give him the death sentence. They should just kill him. They should torture him. All these, you know, or her, or whatever. All these different responses. And at the risk, once again, because I'm always putting myself at the risk by saying what I think and saying what I feel, even if it's controversial and it doesn't go along with the grain of commonplace thought, I think it's really counterproductive and I'm just looking at it on that basis I'm not looking at this and getting involved in an emotional level in terms of values and beliefs this isn't about you know a, whether or not you know if I say oh this person doesn't deserve to die or well, that's counterproductive you know wanting to cut his dick off and feed it to him all these different things if I say that it doesn't mean that I'm supporting any of those people that I'm saying that you know the consequence should be maybe not so counterproductive I'm not supporting the crimes I'm not mitigating the crimes I'm not justifying them I'm not lessening the severity and the significance and really the point of how fucked up they really are and when I say that I do think it's counterproductive and it makes me feel not sorry for the person who's receiving the rebuke who's receiving these, you know, you should die, you should have this treatment done to you because you are scum, because you're, you know, waste of space, because you're abhorrent, you know. So all I'm saying is, I think it's counterproductive that we approach people who cross these lines, whether they are crossing them willingly, fully consciously, they know very well what's going on, they know you know, because they, they've experienced enough on a broader scale, they know well enough what is right, you know, it's not like they're raised just on one side of the fence where it was really nasty, they know what's right, they still do what's wrong, you know, 
if if someone does something wrong and they've got the awareness, obviously it means more and it reflects more about that person and it invites a deeper level of judgment and it warrants maybe a heavier reaction, a heavier consequence or penalty, right? But then you also have people that do things not as consciously, you know, maybe they were right, raised on the bad side of the fence. You know, I used to go to Midland when I was waiting at Jimmy Dean's Diner and Hog's Breath. And a few times, you know, I'd see families, typically Aborigine families, but not always, you know, shouting into the pram or shouting at the young children like toddlers, screaming at them all kinds of obscenities and awful, awful, awful corrosive shit. You know, like, fuck you, shut up, stop crying, you little cunt, like, into a pram, shouting that. And even when I see that, you know, I wouldn't think, oh, somebody should, you know, lock that person up. Or somebody should, should, you know, tie that bitch up and kick her the cunt until she dies, you know. And that might sound funny, you know, even if I saw, you know, somebody beat their child, you know, even if I saw someone being racist or sexist or committing any atrocity, you know, if I saw someone committing an atrocity, damn right, without question, I would intervene, I would stop it from happening, and I would use necessary force, and depending, you can't always have self-control and some things provoke a more emotional response, so maybe I'll give a little bit extra than what is warranted and what is necessary to stop it and to restrain the person so, so that they can be dealt with accordingly. You know, maybe I'll go excessively, but I'd like to think that if I was in complete control and rational and, 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 and acting within the realms of my own ideology and my own values, that I wouldn't do anything more than what is necessary. I wouldn't hurt them anymore or punishment, punish them anymore, repress them, limit them. I wouldn't impose myself on them any more than what I see as being necessary to stop the situation and to hold them accountable. Because, yeah, people need to be held accountable. And the worst of the crime, the worst of the penalty. My point is, and the point of this talk, is that I think people are quick to to jump to the chopping board, or not the chopping board, what the guillotine, you know, or the rope, you know, drawn and quartered. I think there's a, a certain line where if it's below that line, people have this attitude of, oh, okay, this warrants more consideration and how we approach this. There's more variables, you know, like, if, if let's say a man did hit a woman, right? That wouldn't warrant the same reflex, the response of, go kill the prick, you know, or someone should knock his head in, uh, you know, just straight off the bat. If you just heard, you know, a man hit a woman, you wouldn't straight away think that person should suffer you know, something greatly as much as you would think, you know, oh, this man doused this baby in fire and set it alight. You know, if you heard that, that would, more com commonplace reaction would be, well, fuck that pig, fuck that asshole. You know, that he should get the death sentence. And maybe I would agree with that, if that's the necessary measure. If that's the necessary measure, and there's no other measure, maybe I would agree with that. You know, if somebody hears that a man's hit a woman, they might think, well, why? You know, what's the context? What's the situation? You know, in some situations... What if he was the victim? You know what I mean? What if she had a weapon? A knife or a gun? What if she came in his house in the middle of the night? You know? And he was defending himself. You know, whereas there's not many variables. It doesn't really matter about the context. I don't think there's any appropriate context that can mitigate the severity of how fucked up it is if you set a child alight douse it in kerosene and set it on fire. I don't think anything makes that any less fucked up. You know what I mean? But this is the thing. It seems that there's a line that people draw and for different people maybe that line shifts and it's in different 
a different level you know, and applies to some things and not so much other things depending on people's own experiences, perspective, values, the sensitivities, what they're passionate about, you know, the ways they empathize the most. But there seems to be a line for most people and a general line as a consens consens consensus line, an average line for society, at least over here in Perth, Western Australia. And, you know, generally the rapists, the pedophiles, the really sadistic murderers, the premeditated murderers, you know, not just grievous uh, manslaughter, but predetermined and fucked up. Generally, that's the line, at least that's where the line starts for most people on average, I would say. And, you know, it's commonplace that people will be like, oh, they should cut his dick off, they should kill him, they should torture him, they should do this, 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 this. You know, and people won't bat an eyelid, people won't think twice, people won't have a change of heart rate because they're thinking, oh, that's heavy. Oh, we're talking about a human life here. Oh, you know, that's not even part of it. Because your emotional consideration of those people, it ceases. You know, what, what they feel and feeling sorry for them about that. That ceases entirely once people start reacting to something that to them and abroad in general crosses the line. When something crosses the line, well, it's automatic. We should just put them to the stake, set it on fire, you know, and smile and pat ourselves on the back and say we did the right thing. That's one less asshole to fuck with us again, you know, and that's very commonplace. And that is the point of this. I'm not saying that sometimes, like I said before, the death penalty, worst case scenario, I mean, worst case scenario would, would probably be torture and torment and just traumatizing f as prolonged and as elaborately as possible until death or maybe never death. Maybe the worst case scenario is li life in prison, you know, whatever you think the life worst case scenario is. Maybe sometimes it's appropriate, maybe sometime if somebody is so demented and they are so broken that no, you know, amount of dealing with small penalties after committing all these different crimes is going to teach them, you know, not even the big penalties in the years in prison, just six years in prison, that, that won't teach them, you know, and no amount of therapy can save them because they are that broken, that trained, that demented and deviated. That there's no going back to reality. Maybe for those people... In some cases, a death penalty could be the necessary response and to say, well, that person should be hung. But I think to jump to that conclusion without actually looking at the unique case of the unique individual who's, from the very first time he popped out of his very unique mother's very unique vagina and a very unique point in time and space, to embark on his very unique life from that point in time of his unique birth leading through each unique moment to him or her leading through each moment through the years of development up until their current point of a very unique existence where they are like in case I haven't exhausted the word enough very unique in who they are and how they are and how they function and operate think and feel, determine their decisions, if they even determine their decisions, or you know, how they are compelled or impelled. You know, I think we don't think about that stuff. It's not so commonplace, you know, if it's below the line, then we do start looking at, okay, what's your background? How were you raised? How were you cultivated? What was your culture? You know, maybe you were raised a bigot. Maybe you were taught abuse by your father, or maybe it's in your, your sick father's, not your sick father, sorry, your father's sick genes, or your father's violent genes. Maybe it's in your genes, maybe you learnt it. Whatever the case, we don't really think about it once it crosses the line. Once it crosses the line, the person stops being a person. Alright? Unique considerations go out the window, and it no longer remains apparent that this is a human being 
who's had a human life, they are here and now with the best and the worst, sorry, best slash worst of us. They are here now. We don't even think about them as human. We don't think of them as alive. We don't think of them as someone who has a family, who has a mother that they were born from, who has probably at many points in their life or some points in their life contributed to the world in a good way, who's done good, who's got friends that they've actually done great things for. You know, maybe they've made sacrifices. But you don't know that when you when you when you hear about this person that's on the screen or the newspaper or on Facebook, you know, through a friend, when you hear about someone who's done something and it crosses a certain line for you, suddenly they become, you know, something which should be placed upon a faggot and burnt, you know, a bundle of sticks, you know. Instead of being a human who deserves a unique consideration, a unique human, they just become the same, the same sinner, the same criminal, the same sick fuck, the same pig on the pile of all the other pigs, and they all deserve to be roasted just the same. You know, and I think that that is very unhealthy and and very dangerous, disastrous. And I'd like to think that there are better ways to approach these kind of situations where we have wrongdoings within our community, within our society, within the world. Approach it and not just react based on the commonplace reaction that's taught and distilled. Because that's what happens a lot, you know. Even if you look at how the news affects people's mindsets and how people will react differently to, let's say, a war hero who goes out and he murders human beings, he snuffs out life, or she snuffs out life, just the same as someone who murders for a different set of reasons, you know. He, black and white example, you've got the, 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 the war hero and you've got the terrorist, you know. And as you know, it depends which side you're on, that one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist, right? And people will... You know, if somebody's gone off and done sick things, you know, a lot of these guys, they go off and they do, they rape and do all these awful things. But even then, some people who think, oh, they should fucking cut that guy's balls off, they hear about, you know, some Islamic place where Americans or whoever have gone over and, you know, there's cases of people getting raped and they think, well, you know, those, those fuckers deserve that. Like, like that, that's their treatment for being, you know, terrorists. But then what should those people's treatment be for being racist, you know? And then and then what should be the treatment be for the people who decided to punish those people for not punish them appropriately, for being unfair, for being discriminant, you know, and, 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 and imposing, you know? And on it goes, you have people who impose their will because they feel that a limit, in their mind, a limit has been crossed. That warrants an imposition upon another person where this person or this group of people decide the fate, decide the outcome, decide the judgment of what you deserve or what this other person deserves without that person even sometimes having a say or without the person's say being even listened to or without the person even being considered at all, without even being looked at, just a name on the page in a newspaper, listen next to the crime, and people just react, thinking, oh, well, obviously this guy's fucked, he's a terrorist, or he's a this, or he's a that. You know what I mean? And I think that's dangerous, I think it's counterproductive, because when people start imposing the will upon another, because a line in their mind has been crossed, that's, that's when I said, you have this cycle going on of people who will be unhappy with how other people have imposed their wills. Because that's where it all begins in the first place. You know, think about every single thing that people look at as being really disgusting, you know, in terms of crimes, violation of human rights, what people do to other people. And it's always about people imposing their will. If it's imposing physically, sexually, um, you know, men who might not even physically touch their, their wives or their girlfriends, or vice versa, women who don't physically beat up on their guys, and that's as commonplace. But they emotionally torment them and traumatize them and cruelly, you know, manipulate them. 
you know, whatever the case, I think it doesn't help, you know, and it happens a lot. It's like it's fashionable and it becomes trendy for people to love the same way and to accept certain things in a certain kind of way and to hate in a similar fashion too and to hate with as much judgment and with as much less thought and consideration just because that seems the norm. And if anyone gives it any more thought and consideration and dare any more compassion to a vile human being, then that person suddenly gets pinned up on the board and scrutinized. And, you know, the majority might tend to pummel them into the ground and, like, and silence them and say, oh my God, you're a terrorist supporter because you're sympathizing with a terrorist because you think the way they're treated in various places is unfair or the way their people are treated is unfair. You know, I think you're a bigot if you group one whole culture of people, race of people, place of people, kind of person, you know, with a select few of a, f a select group or a select few groups. I think if you associate a small group of individuals for a whole general populace of peoples, I think that's really fucked up. But you might think it's fucked up to sympathize with any of those people if they're just associated with a few unacceptables. You know, and this is the point. It's an endless cycle where everyone is imposing their will upon another because the general tendency when you impose onto someone isn't, you know, a resolve. It's not a peaceful resolution. It's not restoring order. It's not restoring harmony. It's not bridging the gaps that divide us. It's not allowing the other person to become more compassionate, more empathetic, more understanding, more aware, more educated, more informed, you know, more optimistic, more healthy in the way they think the way they look at themselves, the way they look at the world. It's not helping to improve when people cross the line and, and you, perhaps, maybe you react. I personally don't have any lines where if someone does something, I ever think, oh, uh, you know, I mean, sometimes I'm like, yeah, I like to soccer that one person in the face because sometimes I think that's the case and it can help. But when it comes to, to death, cutting someone's balls off or something drastic like that where you're really imposing yourself in a way that is significant in determining the outcome and the fate, the destiny of someone's life outcome. If you cut off someone's hand or take away their life, that's pretty fucking final. You know, cut someone's balls off and feed it to them. That's pretty fucking final. Pretty big call to make. And yeah, in principle, loosely speaking, I'd say like guys that do some pretty horrendous shit do deserve that to happen. And in reality, I'm sure a few would deserve to have that happen. But my point is, I think it still warrants a bit of thought and investigation and a bit of unique consideration of the case at hand. I think we should be aware not to group people and pile them into these categories. You have the blue categories where it warrants a bit of thought and a bit of compassion and feeling and how do we appropriately respond to this. And then the red category, where it's just like fucking hammer it to death. You know, I think hate breeds hate. I think a lot of the time these things happen is because of hate, or at least a lack of love, a lack of understanding, confusion, which leads to anger or delusion or paranoia. You know, people being defensive because they feel they're on the attack, because of other people who feel defensive because they're on the attack. And that's the thing, everyone's being attacked by someone who's imposing their will. In some way, everyone gets attacked. And then everyone loses a bit of energy, just like in the Celestine Prophecy book, it explains we, we lose energy when people dominate us mentally, physically, emotionally. And then, you know, we might go to someone else to try and get our energy back without even knowing it, subconsciously dom start dominating them. Even if it's just talking and we have a tendency to dominate their views and have to correct their views or outdo them. It's like, oh, my idea is better. You know what I mean? Or maybe we play sports or games and we physically dominate. But it's all about energy exchange. And I think when you when someone does something so wrong that you just want to take all their energy away entirely, I think people can power trip on that. I think people can power trip uh, getting on a collective soapbox against a few that are painted red-handed, caught red-handed, and, and 
you know, people get energy from putting their stakes in there and lighting on fire and marching to the streets and saying, you know, put them to the gallows. I, I think that it, it builds not just rapport among the people and it strengthens the bonds and gives energy to those connections between the people, but it also gives energy to the person, a sense of conviction, a connection to a belief. Like, I believe this person needs to die, which is pretty fucking big. And you put your belief in that and it gives you energy. A sense of self, a sense of conviction, a belief system that makes you more important, significant, valuable, makes you more dense, more potent in terms of meaning, how meaningful you are, in, you know what I mean, in, meaningful in, in, in terms of your morality, your ideology. Maybe some people, a lot of people feel that the more they put the foot down, you know, and the more they push for the more significant option, uh, outcomes, and cause more significant things to happen, then it renders them significant. And that's what I mean when I say meaningful. It's about chasing significance. And I don't think we need to feel significant by putting down others. And you get that. You get that on a small scale. It's not necessarily people sending people to the death, making them choke in their own, you know. But it's it's also people dominating, you know. Like, I recently put up a post online about Pokeballs. And the original post was this event, really, just saying that, you know, humanity never comes up never fails to amuse me. There's always new crafty ways to raise the bar of lame to claim. And I said that because my point was about the obsession with Pokemon at the moment. And I go on Facebook and all I fucking see every third, fourth post or fifth post is a Pokemon related post, which is fine because everyone likes what they like. I'm not calling people pathetic or amusing or whatever. I'm saying that the case that people become so fixated, you know, obsessed with such simple things when, you know, there's a fucking revolution in, in Paris at the moment, you know, or France, whatever, and there's a revolution. I mean, I'm not that fixed in. And people aren't fixing on that. People aren't ever fixing on, you know, big things. They just share general fucking collective memes of all important issues and think that's enough. And that was my point when someone forced me to elaborate, was that, you know, I'm frustrated because, like, any obsession is not good. But anytime it is obsessed, it's with Justin Bieber... Or one, you know, fucking Pokemon or some funny new cartoon. You know, it's always fun, fun, fun. And I get that. Fun things trend. But it's when fun dominates on such a scale, in such a simplistic form as a story concept based on enslaving, capturing and enslaving animals and inducing some weird Stockholm Syndrome so they love you and they serve you and they just, their purpose in life is to fight for you. You know, it's, that's a simple concept, which to me doesn't probably help that much in terms of self-development, emotional, sorry, mental enriching, maybe emotional because it's fun, but it's not that meaningful to me. I mean, what philosophy can arise of a concept based on capturing other life forms and then engaging them in, in battle against other creatures that have been captured? I mean, so, I mean, people get so fixated on these things and that's fair. I'm not attacking the people. No, I'm not going to get into that. The point was, I posted this post, and all that extra stuff I just said then was just a fragment of what I had to say in response to this endless barrage of people attacking me, you know, and saying that, oh, you're just uh, spewing hate just because, you know, you don't get it, and there's enough things taking people's fun away, you know, you don't need to shit on it, and blah, 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 and oh, what, because people aren't much in the streets, and they're having some fun, helping themselves and others around them, because they're helping themselves have fun, you know that's it's not good enough they should be out always doing something fighting the course and it became convoluted and exaggerated and elaborated in all different directions and you know it just made me think about how you know people they like to disagree and i know i do it most of the energy i get because we all have our manipulative games we all have our our game that we play to get energy and at least the few games that we're best at playing in terms of keeping our self-esteem high some people have healthy games in which the way that they build their self-esteem leaves other people's self-esteem inflated and may even boost other people at the same time. You know, people that are supportive and complimentary and they choose to be with people who are also supportive and complimentary. Then you have other people who will surround themselves by people who are weaker or on the same level of low, but in different ways. So in some ways they might have to, you know, concede and be dominated and submit and let the other person get their energy their way. But then in other ways, they know they can dominate as well. But either way, it's all about energy exchange. And I think the most selfish way 
is to point the finger at someone else who to you has been so selfish that they've crossed some line that you feel it's warranted to say that person deserves to die. Or that person deserves to be punished severely. I mean, if you're just saying this as a knee-jerk reaction and you haven't even looked at the case, this especially applies. If you've looked at the case and you, for a moment you've got a brief idea of what it is and you think, okay, I know what this person deserves and it's something really fucking heavy and significant and fateful, I still think that's a bit heavy for me, for my liking. It's a bit counterproductive. You know? And like I said, hate breeds hate, fire breeds fire. I think there's better ways for us to all to build our self-esteem. And I think there's a lot more better ways that we can go about bridging the gaps that causes all the friction in the first place. You know, actually putting some WD-40 on that, on that, on that action, and making things oil up and slide better, less friction. You know what I mean? I think, you know, in ter in terms of even our prison system, putting people in a box. Some people think a lifetime's best. You know, putting people in a box with other sick people for any amount of years, thinking that's going to actually help society in any way. I mean, maybe in some cases it helps in the way that it keeps one person off the streets. But then they come back out, what, two years later, four, six years later, on average, right? Ten years later, they come back out worse. They come back out with a lower self-esteem, but with all the worst ways that they've learned to build their self-esteem through domination, right? So, and then, and then they go out and they, they're thinking, you know, my life's already wasted or I've already fucked up. They're in such a fucked up state from you know, being in jail for so long that there's a better chance that they're, they're not going to get on the horse and be like, well, I'm going to do what i got to do to pick things up and improve my life. They'll be like, well, my life's fucked. I'm fucked. I feel like a piece of shit because these guys have been treating me like a piece of shit and because I'm a certified piece of shit, I'm a certified criminal, therefore, I will spend the rest of my life as a criminal. You know what I mean? You spend a few years in the locker... And if you didn't go in there with the right mindset, believing you were a criminal, you're just going to come out thinking you're a harder criminal. You know what I mean? And you might not think, oh, I'm a criminal, but you'll still be a person who does crime. And you're not going to be like, oh, well, that certainly taught me to be your Puritan. Just because you hang out with some toxic, sick, fucked up people who taught you the tricks of the trade for all these years. So I think that doesn't help. It's easy for people to say, put them in a box. Personally, I think... Therapy, there should be a lot more emphasis and focus and use of therapy and on therapy. Being applied, different kinds of therapy for different cases, different amounts, for different periods of time. Maybe some people deserve a lifetime of therapy. Maybe they should have isolation centers for people that are so lost and fucked. But must a soul and a spirit be punished? I mean, we don't know the stories, the unique stories and the unique lives and cases of these people who we are handing out relatively black and white punishments to and black and white consequences like we know what's fit for them but how how can you really assess and evaluate and weigh up the ways in which someone is guilty and wrong and evil and how much they are and how much they are accountable for that and how much of it maybe you could attribute to genes to a disability to situational triggers and pressures at the time to you know things that were taught and conditioned into them by experience you know every single person has a collection of all these things that all their actions hinge upon you know genetics conditioning triggers in the moment someone makes one fucked up decision really really drunk like that guy was paranoid on drugs and he shot his girlfriend through the door if that was really the case and he shot his girlfriend through the door it's kind of messed up but I would think okay well, let's get to the bottom of it why did he do it and let's say hypothetically it was because he was on so much drugs for so long that he became paranoid. And at that one instance he was on drugs and he flipped out and he fired three or five shots into the door and he killed his girlfriend. Who maybe he didn't actually mean to kill. Right? So you think, okay, well is 15 years going to help this guy in prison? 10 years, 5 years? Any amount of years in prison, is that going to help? Is that what he needs? Is that the necessary measure that we should impose upon him? So it's a big thing when you're imposing. Because keep in mind, the, the reason you use to justify you imposing your views on others and what should happen to them is because they impose themselves with their view on someone else. So you're doing the same thing 
to the person who's done the same thing that you're doing to them and you're justifying doing it to them because they've done the same thing to someone else. It doesn't make much sense. You know, maybe if someone, in his case, if it was the drugs, should go on a program, a strict program, where they maybe are contained for up to a year, up to two years perhaps, but it's a pro like a rehabilitation center where you do not leave until it is certain that you are rehabilitated. Because maybe it wasn't the man, sober, that is the one that should be suspect and there should be the one that's charged and, and penalized. Maybe it's the man drug fucked who committed the crime in that state of mind that should be assessed and dealt with accordingly. But what if he can get rid of the drug fucked man? Or what if he can get, get rid of the rage that causes a man in the heat of the moment, you know, and maybe with some alcohol assistance to do some horrible things? Someone to drink, drive, and kill someone. Yeah, it was a stupid choice they made. So, come up with a system, a way of devising lessons that teaches them to be responsible and considerate. And really, like, if we're if we're willing to dish out simple punishments, but heavy as fuck punishments, you know, detrimental punishments as prison, I think it would pay to give a bit of thought and give out other equally intensive treatments and maybe work on figuring out a broader array of different kinds of treatments we could apply to your general categories of criminal and general categories of just wrongdoers you know i think we've made it very black and white and these days people act like they're fucking angels you know and at any opportunity they emphasize the shine of their halo by pointing out the horns in everyone else, and pointing out the, the evil in everyone else, just to make themselves seem so good and righteous. And I think it's easy to fall into that trap of white and black, you know, of, oh, you deserve to live, you deserve to live, you deserve to be thought about, you deserve compassion, to be treated like a human. Oh, you've crossed this mark. No, no, we're just going to just do whatever with you. And all my mates in the society agree with me that that's the way we see it. So if anyone speaks up about it, you're with him. I think that's fucked up. I think it's really heartless and cold and cruel. And yeah, like I said, I'm not perfect. And sometimes my attitude gets in there, my own values, and people do particular things. I, I might give them more than what is necessary. But in my right mind, I'd like to think that if we are going to impose ourselves on someone else, then we should give the necessary amount of time the necessary amount of thought, rational thought, and emotional consideration, and empathy, to the person, before we tell them what is necessary for them to do, or to have happen to them, and before we impose that thing that we say is necessary. We should take the necessary time to arrive at our judgments, before we drop the hammer. Because once you drop the hammer, another hammer drops, and another hammer drops, until we're all surrounded by an endless reverberation of everyone just loving themselves more and more the more they hate everyone else into the ground. You know, hating doesn't help. Boxes don't help. You know, applying the same wooden spoon or punishment, despite the severity of the crime, the shade of grey, doesn't help. By doing that, you're just going to create monsters. You're going to make people think they're monsters, believe they're monsters, and then become monsters. Because you made them feel like monsters. But what if you treat them like a human? You know, um, would, could you ever... What if you... Let's say there was such a thing as time travel. One day you saw a baby. Some guy just came back into a room that you haven't seen before and pulls out a knife and stabs a baby. You might think, oh, this is a, this is one of those times where it's it's a given you know, kill that guy. But what if he's like, oh, no, 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 it's from the future. It's okay, I'm from the future. That's Hitler. Then how do you react? Do you be like, oh, okay, well, I don't feel anything about that then. You know, what if the guy comes and puts a knife to the baby's throat and he's like, this is Hitler. Trust me, here's a video footage telling you what showing what's going to happen in the future. Certified proof from Time Corpse. This is what's going down. This is the guy. we got to do this. But you've got to give your permission. Would you give the permission to slit this child's throat? Because of who they 
are supposedly going to become. But what if what if it wasn't set who they're going to become? What if it was possible to change the outcome of their life? Maybe Hitler would turn out to be the great man that he always was, but a good man as well, not evil. Or not wrong. And, and, and it's sick. You know what I mean? So I think if you can look at a child and think, no, I would never slit a child's throat because they there's always a chance for a future and is, you always look at a person as a whole lifetime. People just think you fucked up once on alcohol you gotta, and, and you crashed into people and now you got to suffer for your whole life or you did this thing, you fell into a frenzy for a few months, you became the wrong kind of person for a while and you did some fucked up things. They, and then they just look at that and they think, okay, let's drop the hammer and end that person's life because of that segment of time. But they fail to include and they always omit the previous passage of time and all the experiences and the story that's there of that person. So you're not just ending that person because that person is just an idea in your head that you're looking at in the context of the crime. You're ending a whole life of a person. You're ending the moment it was a baby, the moment it had its first birthday, its 10th, its 13th, you know, its first kiss, first time we walked an old lady across the street with, I don't fucking know. There's a lot of shit that you don't see and the few things that you do see, you think it's enough to judge that whole person and judge their whole, judge them in a way that you're like, okay, I'm going to come up with a decision that's going to affect your, your whole life. It's going to potentially end your life or stop your life now, put you in prison because of this one thing that's got my attention. Why not pay attention to the fact that you're dealing with a fucking person? Who's got a life just as you. And you're not perfect. You've got horns. The others, I'm sure, shine up their halos by looking at. <laughs> so I think if we all got used to not forgetting that just because someone has faltered or deliberately done something atrocious, you know, doesn't mean we should just start throwing bricks at them. Maybe we should try a different approach. You know, whether it's therapy, whether it's support. You know, remembering, okay, I'm sure there's good parts to this person too. Hitler had good parts to him. Everyone has good parts to them. Maybe if we, the people that concern us the most with the things they do, if we make, if it's possible, if we can make the effort to look at the good parts of their personality and their, what's inside and focus on drawing that out more and emphasizing that and setting up support systems and schemes to facilitate that while minimizing and, and stunting and stopping the negatives. Then we might actually start seeing a society in which prisons will no longer be necessary. There will just be permanent holding camps for those with extreme cases who need it. But even then, their life isn't miserable. They've got TV and whatever. And they can live a comfortable life. Content enough. Maybe. And then you have other places where, you know, it doesn't matter, one person, ten people can commit the same crime, maybe one person will get five years treatment, maybe one person will get five weeks treatment, because the reasons why they did it was different, the treatments they need is different to achieve the same outcome, and the question is, what kind of outcome do you want, do you want an outcome of peace and harmony and things working out better overall for the whole, because we're actually looking at after all the different units that make the whole? Or do you want to just hit everyone the same, with the same hammer, with the same judgment, and it doesn't really matter if people bruise up differently and they didn't even need to bruise up that much in the first place. And we end up with a whole bunch of sad, victim slash abusive, angry people in the world. Anyway, that's my basic idea. My camera's about to die, so I'll stop it there. But, you know, it just disturbs me that people stop being human, they become cold and cruel and mean and ruthless. No mercy at all. Absolute ruthlessness. There's no ruth in it either. It's merciless and it's ruthless. When they're, when they're looking at someone for doing things not the good way. When everyone does things not the good way and everyone deserves to be listened to and looked at and heard for their unique story, the unique standpoint in it all. And I think everyone deserves a unique consideration before people make gross generalizations and impose what they think 
is a fair outcome. Mm.